Hi there, this is S.J. Owen's Science, and yes, we're still talking about those things that all organisms do. Last time we saw that all organisms grow and develop. We started with a young acorn and we watched it grow into a full-sized oak tree. Whenever it became a full-sized adult oak tree, it was capable of making more acorns, which then became trees and they would produce more acorns of their own, and it goes on and on. We called this a reproductive cycle. Next, we saw that all organisms reproduce and have offspring. This time, we'll talk about how all organisms have a complex chemistry. But what does that mean? We should probably add some terms to our term list throughout this video. Chemistry is the science of atoms and molecules. Atoms and molecules are some of the tiniest bits of matter. If you take a look at any ordinary everyday object, if you could look at it very, very closely, you would find that it's made of many, many small pieces. Bits that are so small that you can't see them with your eyes. We call these atoms and molecules. In fact, molecules are made of atoms. A molecule is more than one atom stuck together. Chemistry can also mean atomic and molecular ingredients of an object. You might say this object has an interesting atomic and molecular makeup, or it has an interesting chemistry. And that brings us to our point, that all living things have a complex chemistry. Let's take a look at one of the simple molecules of life. This molecule has only four atoms. One is blue, and three of them are white. Now, atoms don't actually have any color at all. It's just important that we color them differently so that we can see that they are different kinds of atoms. The white atoms are called hydrogen, and the blue atom is called nitrogen. This molecule is quite large compared to the first. This one has 27 atoms. It gets even bigger and more complex. This picture shows a group of many macromolecules stuck together. Macromolecules are big molecules. If you want to know what this is called, this is a strand of DNA shown in gray, coiled around a protein shown in color. It gets even more complicated or complex from here. This picture is of a virus. This is one of those things that can cause disease. They make you feel bad. We know that viruses are very small because some of the world's best microscopes can barely see viruses. But it turns out that this virus is actually 100 times as big as the DNA and protein shown in this picture. It's true that all living things have a complex chemistry. Next, we'll see that all organisms maintain homeostasis. I have a feeling that this is another word that we'll need to add to our term list. Homeostasis is the control over internal conditions. This implies that all organisms have an inside and an outside. The inside shown here in blue and the outside shown in red. Remember from a previous video that we talked about the environment, or the surrounding objects and events, whatever is outside of the living thing. The environment is not under homeostasis. It is not under control of the organism. The organism only has control over its insides. Let's take a look at a specific example involving the human digestive system. Let's say that you're out with your friends and you eat a slice of pizza. This causes your blood sugar level to rise. In your blood, there are nutrients, there is energy, and you don't want to spend it all at one time. You don't want your blood sugar level to be high, so you must lower it. A part of the body called the pancreas creates something called insulin. Insulin tells the rest of the body to store the blood sugar and save it for later. Essentially, this is a drop in your blood sugar level. This is an example of homeostasis because it's a control over a part of the inside of the body. We can't control the weather. It's a part of the environment. It's outside of us. It is not under homeostatic control. 
homeostasis does allow us to control our blood sugar levels, our stomach acidity, our body temperature, and other different parts of the inside of our body. On a side note, diabetes mellitus is a disease in which people will experience insulin production problems. People with this disease often have high and low blood sugar levels. It can be quite uncomfortable and even deadly. 285 million people worldwide had diabetes in 2010, and this is a pretty significant portion of the world population. Well, that's all that we'll talk about for this video. Next time, we'll talk about how all organisms are made of structures called cells, and how they all pass their traits onto their offspring. This is SJO in Science, and I hope that you take the time to check out some of the other videos. Thanks for watching.